The group of seven industrial powers have drawn together to criticize China's coercion of Taiwan and Russia's threat to station nuclear weapons in Belarus. Hosted by Japan in its resort town of Karo Izawa, the G7 foreign ministers promised to step up sanctions on Moscow over its war on neighboring Ukraine. Mish Ishida has mourned the outcome of the three-day meeting. Russia's war against Ukraine topped the joint communique by G7 foreign ministers in Karuizawa. It condemns Russia in the strongest possible term and calls for Russia to withdraw all its forces and equipment from Ukraine immediately and unconditionally. The grouping calls Russia's rhetoric to deploy nuclear weapons to Belarus as unacceptable and that it will be met with severe consequences if it uses chemical or biological weapons. Japan also attempted to unify the position of G7 members over China. According to Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi, G7 foreign ministers agreed to engage with China, especially on global challenges of common interest. They were against any unilateral attempts to change the status quo by force or by coercion, especially in the East China Sea and South China Sea. G7としては初めてですね、法の支配に基づく自由で開かれた国際秩序。これへのコミットメント、そして世界のどこであれ一方的な現状変更のコロミに強く反対する、これを確認できたというのは大きな成果であると考えております。Japan devoted a session at the G7 foreign ministers' meeting to discuss disarmament and non-proliferation, during which it expressed its concern about China's buildup of its nuclear arsenals. The host country said its position is clear as the only nation suffered from nuclear bombings near the end of World War II. Whether G7 nations would unite on how they approach the situation in the Taiwan Strait was watched closely following French President Emmanuel Macron earlier this month warned against being drawn into the Taiwan conflict. An expectation that any differences be dealt with peacefully and that neither side uh, take any unilateral actions that would disrupt the status quo that pre preserves peace and stability. Um, that is clearly uh, what every single one of our G7 partners uh, believes. A sizable portion of time during the three-day meeting was dedicated to the Global South, or emerging economies. This was disclosed by the U.S. Secretary of State. Japan as G7 chair this year aspires to promote a free and open Indo-Pacific, which includes the Global South by enhancing engagement, in particular with ASEAN and the Pacific Islands. The host believed it succeeded in pushing for the grouping's greater participation in the region, with members agreeing to regularly discuss issues related to the Indo-Pacific. With the groundwork laid, next the issues are expected to be discussed further at the G7 summit in Hiroshima in May. Michio Ishida, CNA, Karuizawa, Japan.